300 Christians needed to change the spiritual temperature of this nation forever. Are you one of them? The Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. For this end time, you don't have to be a pastor or someone in a leadership position in a church to be part of this great move of God. All you need is a genuine hunger for the kingdom of God to be established on earth. Pastor Sunday Adelaja, the pastor of the largest church in Europe, the Embassy of God, is initiating a move of God in this nation called the History Makers Bible School. The History Makers Bible School takes place only on one Saturday every month to equip you for the next level. It will also be a good opportunity to network with like-minded Christians. You will receive tried and tested keys to church growth and pastoring without tears at the Emmanuel Center, 9 to 23 Marsham Street, Victoria, London, Southwest 1P 3DW. Registration is £40 per session. To register, call 0798-114. 6157 or email admin at hmbsuk.org or visit the website at www.hmbsuk.org. Whatever you do, don't miss this move of God. Call the number on the screen now to register. Remember, you were called for a time like this. Hello and welcome to the program. And you know, today, uh, by the grace of God, we have the, past, the senior pastor of the Embassy of God in Kiev in the Ukraine, Pastor Sandia Delaja. We're going to be talking about so many things about his ministry. And I want to encourage you to please get on the phone, tell a friend, a relative, a neighbor, tell them that it is happening right now on this channel. It's a program you must not miss because something is happening. It is a revolution, and God will bless you as you partake, as you participate in that revolution. I came to Kiev to check exactly what's going on, to hear from the main man himself, and I was blown away by what I saw. And I know that by the grace of God, God will direct you also to come visit so that it's better to see, like they say, than to hear. So God bless you as you continue to watch. Welcome to the program, Pastor Sunday. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank God for your life. Thank, God for, thank you for having me as well, because I've been here for some days now, and uh, I've been really blessed. And I've seen things that's really, really confirmed to me that Christ is coming soon, and the fact that, so, you know, God is doing something in this ministry, and I have never seen anything like that across the whole world in the present time. And that's the reason why I'm so excited called uh, Church Shift, and this book. I went through this book, and I was highly blessed. And I want to tell you, I just believe that any Christian that believes God has called them for this end time, any Christian, be they pastor, be they church leader, or be they ordinary Christians within the church that believes that God has called them for this end time, should get this book, because I've never read any book like this on how to enforce the kingdom of God on this earth. And if you have a calling on your life and you really want to go places with God, for God to be excited over you, to build an inheritance for yourself in heaven, this is the book. And in this program, we're going to be talking about the book. And you will really be blessed by, you know, actually getting the book yourself and going through it. Pastor Sunday, I went through this book and I was, I was totally blown away. I, I said, God, how come... Everybody in the whole world is not reading it because we know books by some other authors and they say, oh, million, sell million selling book and whatsoever. I know this book has traveled far, but even within the kingdom, you're not hearing people say it. The way they would tell you there's a title. Like, for instance, you hear a book like uh, Derek Prince's uh, Blessing or Curse. Most Christians everywhere you go, they say, oh, I've read the book. I was blessed, and which is good. Praise God. But this particular one. Uh, purpose Driven. Uh, oh, yeah, you heard of the Purpose Driven Life or oh, Million Selling Book. And really, this is totally beyond that. Thank God for purpose-driven life, purpose-driven church. But this goes way beyond, and that's why I'm so excited. I'm going to read some excerpt from it in a minute, but tell me, how did you, 
you know, how, how does the, the inspiration come to you to actually put this idea in this book? Hmm. Church shift uh, is, is an inspiration and I, an idea that I got after visiting America. Uh, before I started to go to America, I had st built a church of 15,000 people here, and the Lord would not allow me to travel. So I was in the underground, in the back backyard of communism, and I was not in a hurry to travel because God was telling me, don't go yet. I don't want you to travel. God gave me a specific instruction for the first seven years of our church not to travel anywhere. So I was not traveling, even though I had you know, a large church. And people, when people were coming here, they would say, this is the biggest hidden secret in Christianity. This is the, that this is the biggest secret that is hidden from the outside world. How could you have a church of 15,000 in Russia, all white people, and nobody knows about it? So I wanted to go out only when God gives me the instruction. So before then, I had been seeing a lot of men of God from America. I've read the book of Ola Roberts, T.L. Osborne and uh, Billy Graham. I've been impressed by these men. And I thought that America would be a sort of uh, New Jerusalem of some sort. Uh, it would be a place where the kingdom principles are enforced. And I was looking forward to seeing the American church. I was really looking forward to learn from the American church. So when I, went, when I began to travel to America, that was when I got a shock of my life. And then I traveled to England and to the Western world. I said, what? I discovered that what the, church, the kind of church that God has helped me to build in Russia, I couldn't see any church like that in America or in Western Europe. I said, I thought I was going to learn from these places because there had been freedom and there had been all these men of God that you hear about. But here I was, I'd never really been an official member of any church. Just six months, I attended the church where I got saved in Nigeria. And here, I just built this church on the instructions of heaven, just by downloading from God and seeking the face of God. And so, and I see that most of the churches I see, they are totally off. It's like, this is the main road, and you, your car is just taking off. And people are not even aware they had left the main road of the gospel. So that's, that became so clear to me. It's like, we are driving in the dish. All these churches I saw in America and the Western world, they've just left the main road of the kingdom message. And it's that nobody remembers anymore where the road is supposed to be, where the straight line is. And they're driving off, and they're not even aware of it. So when I saw that, I was so alarmed that, could it mean that the church in America has missed it like this big time. Definitely there will be some churches there that are, but I'm talking about, talking about the main 90% of the church, or uh, 80%, that, you know, and people are not even aware, they're just doing church. And we are not called to do church. And I said, that is why they are losing this country. And I saw clearly that with the way church has been done in America and in the Western world, especially America, we are soon going to lose the biggest Christian nation in the world. If the church in America does not shift, and if they don't learn to return to the basics of the kingdom message, and they don't learn to do church differently, we are going to lose America not just as a Christian nation, but we are going to lose it as a leading nation in this, century, in the, in this world. So that, was, that became very apparent and so glaring to me. So I wanted to scream, I wanted to shout, I wanted to come out out there and say, hey, listen to me, you've missed it, there's something missing, I know exactly what you need. But when I speak, they all get so inspired and you know, say, wow, this is new. Oh, what a great message, wow, where are you coming from? We need this, oh wow. They just keep on uh, exclaiming, giving me compliments, and just give it, getting encouraged. But they're not getting the fundamentals of what I'm trying to say. I don't need applauses. I don't need comments. I don't need you no know, compliments. I don't need uh, people saying they were impressed by the message. That's not what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear them saying, hey, let's all stop doing what we're doing right now. And let's repent. And let's begin to look at church differently. When I saw that, how many churches will I go to preaching? 
to re really make them hear this and repent. Then it came very clearly to my mind that no, I must write a book. And then I thought about the, uh, the title. I, uh, you know, brought people together. So we came out with this title called Church Shift. The church must shift for the kingdom of God to take over nations. The church must shift for us to be capable again to do what the kingdom of I mean, what, what the God of heaven had commissioned us to do. If the church of today does not shift, we are losing not just the world, we are losing the church itself. And um, when we, you know, when one of the very tragic things that I notice in the church in America is that church now is being measured by uh, how many mem by membership, how many followers you have. Or a church will be, is being measure, measured by uh, what is the budget of your church? How big income, how, how big an income do you have? Uh, how big an income do you have? Or uh, what, what is your property? Or what's your building? And so those, those have become the, the status thing in Christianity, and that's how success is now being me measured. And success is now being measured by how many people you could gather. I know that. You know, I've, I, it got so bad that I would go to speak in conferences, I would come early, but they, I, don't, I didn't know that they don't expect the big church to come and sit down through all these sessions and just, so I would come in, uh, being one of the speakers, maybe I'll be speaking from Wednesday, I'll come from Monday, to listen to other speakers, come in just in my, you know, casual way, Nobody would even notice me that I was there. But when it's my day, and they know I'm one of the speakers, this is the pastor, Pastor Sunday. Ah, you pastor. People would never even pay attention to me when I was walking through the aisle. They begin to clap and, you know, exalt me. We now worship success. Hmm. We now worship, you know, results. When, especially when they begin to hear, oh, he passed 10,000 or 20,000 or 30,000 people. Oh, wow. Wow. They begin to look up to me as if I'm an idol, a god of some sort. So I know we've missed it. I said, my God. We are no more valuing people or celebrating people because of the essence of who they are. Because they carry the image of God. Because God is in them. Because they are humans. But we want to celebrate men now because of the success they have. So that's just like the Hollywood so become, be, people become cel celebrities because of what they're doing or what they've done, not because of the essence of their personality, who they, who they are, what are the principles they live by, and what quality of, of, of God, of life, and what, 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 what is the, 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 the quality of the God that is in them. Not on the essence of that anymore. It's what you have. We have totally turned the church upside down. We've missed the message. And I knew that if this book, Church Shift, will get into the hand of any pastor, and you had said that, not just pastors, that any believer, that any, and there people have been telling me, anybody who has read the book, they've said their lives have been changed through the book. That's correct. So that is the, uh, that's where I got the idea of the book from. Yeah, because I, I read the book and my life to, was totally changed. My focus changed. I felt like just going away somewhere and just starting something fresh. Because the feeling I had was like, I've wasted so many years in the kingdom. I've been born again so many years and there's nothing really to show for it. That's the feeling I came out with. And that's why I became angry with this perverted gospel from America. And I thought, God, what is going on? In the past, you go to America to minister, and you hear ministers asking, you know, they invite you to their ministries based on how many books you've written. Is how many books have you written? Uh, are you a doctor? You know, what title? And that's why you get a lot of hungry pastors today, go look for a title, go maybe buy a doctor's title or something. So they put doctor in front of their name. They can't even speak any English to save their own lives. That is the problem we have today. The kingdom has been messed up. And unfortunately, because they, are, they have no more conscience. When you talk like this, they get angry because the people know themselves. You see, the ones that are after God, they, they don't mind what you're saying. But the ones that are supposed to hear this and really go down to God in prayer and cry and say, God, please help me change. They get rather angry. Like say, who are you to say that? Why are you judging? Who? But they don't know that God speaks through man to judge man. That's where the problem is. So, you know, and also, like you said, if we're not careful, we're going to lose America 
as a Christian nation. And I looked at, I, it, when I was reading this book, I started looking at leaders across the world who say they are Christians, born again. George Bush came, he said, yeah, he's born again. And he tried to enforce kingdom principles. It, it, well, it didn't happen. You look at Nigeria, uh, General Obasanjo, born again. In, in first kingdom, and God started showing me what happened. That these guys, when you're born again and you're a leader, you can't enforce it on the people. It's got to come from the people to the top. Yeah. And that's what we're seeing in the Ukraine. Yeah. And this is the model that should take place around the world. So if you're a born again leader and you, you arrive as a leader and you try to enforce it, it won't happen because the yeah. guys on the U, mm. they, haven't, they can't they see what follow. you're talking about. They, they They've can't not follow changed you. their minds. They're not changed. So to them, you're just wasting their time. You're blocking them from stealing the money. Yeah. And that's where the problem is. And they will fight you. They will. It's happened. That's why George Bush didn't get any good press. Yeah. Even though he says, look, they said, look, rather than distributing condoms in Africa, why don't you teach them abstinence as well? And abstinence is the key. Because a lot of people, when you even give them condoms, they don't even use it because they tell the condom removes the satisfaction. And then the guy says, look, let abstinence run along. They fought him and said, no, 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 don't yeah. talk about abstinence. It's the condom, the condom, the condom. And then people become more promiscuous because they believe that it's condom. And as, at, at the end of the day, the rate of uh, in, in, infection of AIDS and all those things is increasing. Pregnancy too is increasing because you've given them the liberty to go and operate because you got it wrong. And that's why I really thank God for your life. But then let's talk about the church because I want to talk about so many aspects of this book. But first of all, before we go far, I want to actually read out some of the comments made by some people in this, uh, this book uh, about the book itself. Lovely, lovely comments. I was really impressed. There's, uh, uh, there's a gentleman called Kenneth, Kenneth Omar, who is the Bishop of Macedonia International Bible Fellowship. He says, some are called to churches. Some are called to cities. Sunday Adelaja has a fresh word for the nations. His experience with the Lord, his compassion for people, and his commitment to the kingdom make Sunday Adelaja a world-class leader with a world-class vision to build a world-class army to change the world for Christ. <laughs> this world-class book is a must for you today. That's, that's a, a great man of God that I have great respect for. He said, read and reap benefits for a lifetime. That's Kenneth Ulmer. Another one here from uh, Bill Clinton, U.S. President. Bill Clinton said, I've heard and read a great deal about Pastor Sunday and about the work he's doing. All those who do great things go through attack, such as Pastor Sunday has endured. Do you know that as we're talking right now, there are pastors who hear the sort of persecution you are going through in the Ukraine. They might not come out and say it publicly, but they are excited that, well, he's been disciplined. Who is it to talk to us this way? That's why I have a, you know, I, I keep that I say, God, these guys don't fear God. They don't know God because when you look at what Paul the Apostle wrote, Paul was a young man like yourself, but he wrote to elders in the church who were a lot older than him and said, look, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? <laughs> what is wrong with you? And I said, if Paul was here today, they would have fought him and said, who are you to talk Evil to? Evil rebuked Peter. Thank you. So this is where the problem is. These people have forgotten that God is still talking today through his people to his people. So to them it's like, who, who are you to tell us what's what? We know what's what. We've been in this field for a long time. But let me just quickly go ahead. It's, this one is from Don, Dr. Wendell Smith. I know of no minister around the world who is more unique and influential than Bishop Sunday Adelaja. I count him as a wonderful friend in the, United, in, sorry, in the kingdom and pray God's divine protection and direction over his dynamic ministry. The supernatural principles of this book are radical, controversial, and life-changing. They will make ministers of the gospel reconsider their place and calling in ministry. Our minds will be stretched and our concepts will be challenged as they should be for more effective 21st century ministry and preparation for the coming of the Lord. And I'll read this one and take a break and carry on, and then we'll come back to some more later. It's, this one is from uh, Alton Garrison. He's the Assistant General Superintendent of the Assemblies of God in America. He said, in order to reclaim America's communities, a dynamic leadership paradigm shift will need to take place in our local churches. Pastor Sunday Adelaja has provided a pathway for us to achieve success in the years ahead. Read it and reap from it. Wonderful. You know, I've seen pastors of churches who focus attention when they want to start church or want to move the church to another level. The first thing they think is that, 
How do we jazz up the praise and worship team? We need to buy first class instruments so that when, are, when, we're pray, when we're singing, the whole place will be shaking. And, and the focus. <laughs> and I remember when we started the church in Ghana, the people said, oh, we need the instruments. And I said, there's no money for instruments. Do you think that God is not listening to the people that clap in the church without instruments? I said, even the ones that clap do more melody than you that sing, and you are singing rubbish. So we had to carry on that way. Until finally money came, we bought it. I said, so your, 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 all your priorities are totally wrong. So, but, but today, like, you know, I want you from reading through this book, I saw the difference between a church that's there to entertain and then the church that's there to change. What's the difference? So can, can you, from your experience, tell us what you have seen personally? Uh, well, I see that a lot of churches, we've been diverted. And we now pay uh, attention to the superficial things. So it's all about flash, but no essence. All flash, no gain. All flash, no, uh, no grace. All flash, no essence. So that's the way we started our church too. When we started our church, there was no instrument. No praise, nobody, no, no team, no singing team. I was the only one singing myself. I was just, you know, and no, no singing. In fact, for the first few months, we were not even having singing. People, in, because we were getting people from the world. So they don't even know you are supposed to be singing in church. <laughs> <laughs> and if anything I do, they think that's the way it's supposed to be. They don't even know that's supposed to be instruments. It's because we want to compete with other churches. It's because we are getting other believers who have seen it the way, the way church is supposed to be in other churches. So they are now coming expecting for you to overdo or outdo the other churches because you are going after members of other churches because you want other members you know who have been of to leave their churches and come so you want to build a better praise and worship team you want to have better instruments it is because we are fishing in the in the in the aquarium instead of fishing in the river or in the ocean we are we are trying to uh, steal from one another membership that is why we want to impress other people but if you don't if you want to go after who Jesus sent us to go after to go after the unbelievers, the down and out, the needy, the desperate. The desperate, they don't care for whether you have music or not. The desperate, the down and out. The people who, who, who commit suicide on a daily basis in our cities, they don't care what instrument you have. They don't even know what instrument means mean anymore. They are blind to that. They just want somebody to touch them, to touch their soul with the message of the gospel, to touch them with the heart of love of the Father, to touch them with the hand of, 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 of the Almighty. That is what is, what is needed. So, so, uh, so, unfortunately, many of the churches today have been diverted and, and they, they pay attention to the wrong stuff. And that's why we are not effective. Uh, when, when we started out that way, people were surprised. How is it that you don't have praise and worship team? You don't have instruments. And then you have in the first year 1,000 people with, with no instrument. 1,000 people. Serious. Because it's all about the changes you have brought about in the lives of those people. Even people from our churches, when they go to other churches and see them having instruments and things like that, they are no more impressed so much anymore because they know what has happened to them. They have been transformed from inside out. But when we are trying to pay attention to the outward things like uh, music, praise and worship, instruments, we are trying to rely on outward you know, influence, the out, out, outward effects to transform the inner man. It's supposed to be the opposite. It's supposed to be the, the, the relying on the Spirit of God to do a deep inner work that no outward effect could have done. Things that are coming from outside that are affecting you from flesh to inside, they can do very little effect. They can really have, have very little impact. But the real genuine impact is what God produces in the soul of man. Of course, there is a place for praise and worship. There is a praise, a place for modern instruments. God encourages us to have that. We have that now in our church. But we don't put primary stuff to be, you don't put secondary stuff to be the primaries. You have to know what is primary and what is secondary. So you, things like instruments and uh, what building you are having. Can you imagine our church is 15 years and it's only now that we are trying to build. Because we don't put you know, building above 
or before people. Our focus force, we had touched, we had made sure that over two million people got saved with their own feet walking to our altar in Kiev alone before we started even trying to talk about building. Two million people came to feel the salvation of the uh, form. So only after that we put men first, men's souls, men's concern. You know, when you have done enough of the primary stuff, the things that God exalts, first of all, then you could do these secondary things to make people more comfortable. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've been blessed by what you saw and heard. And we just hope that it's not just you being blessed alone, but for it to provoke you to rise up to do the things of the kingdom for the glory of God. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with you on the second part of this same program, talking about the book, The Church Shift. God bless you and bye for now. 300 Christians needed to change the spiritual temperature of this nation forever. Are you one of them? The Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. For this end time, you don't have to be a pastor or someone in a leadership position in a church to be part of this great move of God. All you need is a genuine hunger for the kingdom of God to be established on earth. Pastor Sunday Adelaja, the pastor of the largest church in Europe, the Embassy of God, is initiating a move of God in this nation called the History Makers Bible School. The History Makers Bible School takes place only on one Saturday every month to equip you for the next level. It will also be a good opportunity to network with like-minded Christians. You will receive tried and tested keys to church growth and pastoring without tears at the Emmanuel Center, 9 to 23 Marsham Street, Victoria, London, Southwest 1P 3DW. Registration is £40 per session. To register, call 0798-114. 6157 or email admin at hmbsuk.org or visit the website at www.hmbsuk.org. Whatever you do, don't miss this move of God. Call the number on the screen now to register. Remember, you are called for a time like this.